I have my turbo diesel wagon up on the lift today trying to find a coolant leak. I noticed the other day I had the car parked and I saw some wetness underneath the car and you start poking around looking at it and I realized it was not diesel fuel, it was coolant. Then I got the creeper out and I looked underneath and sure enough all along the bottom of the radiator there, there were drips of coolant that you could see. And I'm thinking, oh no, I'm going to have to get a radiator. I'm I have enough projects already. So I really didn't want to have to replace the radiator in this car here that I call Piper, by the way, for those of you who've been following my videos. I wanted to share with you something that probably all of you should be doing. And that's anytime you work on the cooling system of your car, whether it be replacing a thermostat, replacing the radiator hoses, replacing the little short hose, you should do a pressure test. A lot of times, you know, you think you got the clamps on tight enough, or particularly with these older engines that have some corrosion on the nipples where the hoses go, you'll get these little leaks that'll show up and you'll go driving off and you'll come back and you'll see puddles of coolant on your car. Most people don't want to do a pressure test. They call it a radiator pressure test, but it doesn't have to be for the radiator. I'm going to call it a coolant system health test. And that means you have to pressurize the system and look everywhere and you will see where the coolant is coming out. A lot of times, particularly in the front of the engine, it is really hard to find a leak. Jerry and I got together and we said, okay, we just figured out another use for our pressure bleeder tank. You're probably looking at that tank over there and saying, hey, Kent, the master cylinder's on the other side over here. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm not doing the brakes right now. So we got the tank out because it does have a gauge on. This is really critical when you pressurize your cooling system, you really don't want to go over 15 PSI. That's max. If you do, you're going to start blowing hoses off and maybe causing some of the damage. That's really critical. But because we have a pressure gauge on our pressure bleeder, all we needed to do was come up with a fitting. Now, this is a commercial fitting that's available. I'm not going to show it in detail because what we're doing right now in the shop, back Jerson's in the back room there, he's trying to engineer a cap that we can sell to people that already have our tank and they can hook it up to the top of the radiator to, or to the reservoir here and pump up pressure. And then they can check, okay, do I have a leak? Well, you can even test for a blown head gasket, but primarily I found this very helpful. Anytime you do any work on the cooling system, radiator, hoses, thermostat, whatever, just <laughs> grab your tester pressurize it and just watch. It's a lot better than you know driving it outside and letting it run for 20 minutes like most of us have to do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pump up 15 PSI and then I'm gonna try to get the camera in here. We're gonna use a combination of our eyeballs and maybe some paper towels to try to figure out where the leak is coming from because I don't wanna go out and buy a new radiator and this is another lesson here. Just don't start throwing parts at a problem like this until you diagnose it. So this is the ultimate diagnosis of a cooling system. You want to bring the pressure up. I'm going to bring it up to about 12 or 13 and then I'm going to see if it's leaking down. Because if you have a real bad leak, of course you're going to start seeing it coming out on the ground here. But let's just look here and see if this is going to come down. Well, there you have it. It's leaking, but it's leaking not... Well, it looks like it might be leaking out of two places here. Look at that, here and here. So this is going to take some further investigation. Yeah, I can see some wetness right down in here. Look at that, right by that temperature sensor for the EGR valve. Okay, right in here, so let's look underneath here. It's dripping out of the short hose there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the turbo elbow off so we can get a closer look at that. So I think I'll go after this leak first. We'll make sure we get this leak fixed and then we'll start looking at the leak that's coming over there from the left front side of the engine. Right here, you can see the coolant coming out of the top of the short hose, but you have to be careful when uh, you're diagnosing something like this, it could be coming from up above and leaking down onto the top. So what I'm going to do to confirm that, I'm gonna wipe this off and then I'm gonna hold the paper towel above it to make sure that it's not leaking from up above. 
By the way, pressure's dropped down to about 7 PSI. Well, look at that. Towel's not wet, so it's not coming from up above, but we definitely have a leak coming out of this hose right here. The mechanic who put this hose on this engine, by the way, he put the clamps. You want to put the clamps on this side so you get to them in the future. He's got the clamps buried in here behind this shroud for the EGR pipe. So it's going to be hard to even get these clamps tightened. But a lot of times just tightening the clamps, this is something you want to do periodically on these old engines as they age is maybe every couple of years just come in and tweak your hose clamps. Uh, just a little bit tighter because they will loosen up over time. Now this could have some corrosion in there and that's why that's leaking. But I'm going to try just tightening the hose clamp first. We'll get this leak fixed and then we're going to go back up here because I still see coolant right there. So this hose clamp is probably not sealing as well. I tightened this upper radiator hose clamp about a turn and uh, the leak has stopped here. Okay. But look at here, look at that short hose. I went in there with a seven millimeter wrench, got on the clamp and tightened it down to where I did not want to tighten it any further. And look at this, it's still leaking coolant and the pressure is only at seven PSI and there's quite a bit of coolant leaking out of the short hose. This is gonna require some work, I'm not gonna show it in this video. I'm just gonna show you why this happens on these older engines. Here's a good example. I just pulled this off an engine a couple weeks ago and it was leaking too. But look at the amount of corrosion on the hose nipple, both ends. You know, this is the upper part that goes into this hose and then this goes into the top of the short hose. So when you have this much corrosion built up behind the hoses, you can clamp forever and you're never going to stop the leak. You really have to take this off and clean this up. I have other videos on this. I'll put in the description below how how you can fix this but this this is an example of why you want to change your coolant have fresh coolant in your car it's why you want to periodically tighten your hose clamps because if the hose clamps are just slightly loose it'll allow coolant to kind of creep by and start cr to corrode this aluminum i also put anti-corrosive gel on this aluminum when i reinstall the hoses so <laughs> Not today, but, but another day I'm going to go ahead and have to pull this whole housing off of the thermostat. And, you know, we may have to replace the hoses as well because when the hoses have been sitting on this, they also get, uh, you know, kind of deformed down there so they won't seal properly. So to fix this leak properly and know it's fixed for good, I'm going to have to pull off the thermostat housing, pull the short hose off, clean this, and replace it if the corrosion is really bad. So I just want to show you quickly what we're currently using. Uh, this part is part of a kit that's well over $100. And I know that most you know, DIY guys aren't going to be spending $100 or more just to test their cooling system. So while I was checking for the leak there, Jerson was back in the shop creating a new adapter. Look at that. Using a readily available Mercedes radiator cap. He's making a modified cap that will go in and seal tightly against either the top of the radiator or the coolant reservoir that you see here. So we're trying to come up with something that will be economically feasible for the DIY mechanic so he can test his own cooling system. All right, this is exciting. It's, it's the day before Christmas. This might be the ultimate Christmas present for us here. We're, we're just and I are going crazy, but look at this. Doesn't that look pro? We just put this on and then you just tighten this down tight. Now we've got a tight seal. I'm going to have Jerson do the honors and pump up the tank and see if it'll hold pressure. Okay, Jerson, hit it. Oh, look at that. It's coming up faster it's than the other adapter. Are we happy or what here? Look at that. Five pounds. Five pounds? Almost 10 pounds. Whoa. Look at 10 that. Let's take it up to about 12.56, okay? There you go. Yeah, it's okay. Just water. <laughs> okay, let's see if we got a little bit of leak down because now we got coolant dripping on the floor here. Ooh. Not as bad. But leaking, leaking coolant on here. See, look, the coolant slicks are leaking. Yeah, I know, I know. Look at that. We got wow. a slight leak down and we definitely are leaking coolant again. But hey, 
we've got a new product here, dude. I don't think it's leaking. It's leaking right down there. Okay, go ahead and spray that up with our leak tester. Spray underneath, too. We got any bubbles? <laughs> oh, look at that. No leak. That's a pretty amazing invention. Thank you, Jerson. Happy New you're, Year to you and a very welcome. Merry Christmas. So I think you just got to see an example of why we like working on cars. It isn't the car, it's the creative aspect. So Jerson, what? why do you like doing this kind of stuff? Because I like creative stuff. I like to <laughs> modify things. I like to make something different, new. <laughs> That's right. So he goes back in the machine shop back there while I'm out here digging around on cars, and he'll come walking out with some new invention, and he did that today. Isn't that amazing? I believe that every Mercedes owner, because that radiator cap fits almost everything from the 70s up almost to the 2000s, so you don't need to take your car to a radiator shop to test your cooling system. I mean, a lot of times people think, hey, I gotta have a radiator pressure test. No, you need a cooling system health test. So this is going to be our called our cooling system health tester. So back to you, Jerson. What made you decide to go that route? We had talked about having an expansion ball in there and some other machining, some special clamp device like you saw on that original one. What made you think of this? Well, if you get something really super sophisticated, it will be too expensive. So you have to reduce the cost and you have to make a product that is not too expensive, but it's going to be, uh, you can make the job done right and check you know like expensive equipment that's right and so if one of our customers already has our brake bleeder tank this becomes a very inexpensive addition to add to the tank to test their cooling system and that's exactly what you set out to do we could charge a hundred dollars for something but i don't think a lot of people are going to buy that right yeah the, the reason is you know just make the uh something the the product that is cheap enough that people can afford to buy it can afford to check you know the car i mean this is very simple and easy just to screw the cup there put to 14 to 15 psi and you know check for leak you can check you know the heater core inside you can check you know any yeah. hose here in the engine compartment you can check pretty much anything you know if you have some kind of fog inside might be the heater core yeah, that's might, right. be, might be bad hard and, to test and you but... just look over here for leaking but the leak is inside so yeah, yeah. this is going to help you to do a better job yeah. on your car this is something you want to do anytime you change the radiator, change the thermostat, whatever. You've got a tester, you can quickly hook it up and check everything for leaks before you ever drive away. The thing is, if you own this car that is over 20 years old, you have to make sure that your hose is not cracked inside. You have mm -hmm. to make sure everything is working properly before you hit the winter. Yeah. You don't want to work on this car in the winter. No. No. So before you go into winter, just put the cap, pressure out your system and check it out and you'll be ready for winter. This particular product is probably not going to be available immediately if you're watching this video on YouTube at uh, the end of December 2019. But we're going to get on this. I think Jerson's going to make 50 of these caps and you'll be able to buy either the cap by itself if you already have a pressure bleeder or we'll combine the two together. So you can do your own cooling system test this happens over and over again we go all the way back to when we first designed those valve adjusting wrenches where we just say okay we got what are we going to do how are we going to make this how are we going to make this better right yeah that was like 15 years ago <laughs> at least 15 years yeah, ago and we've been it. doing this for the last 15 years so i think now you really understand why jerson and i like working together on these old cars by the way how many years have you been working with me? It was about 23 years. 23 years yeah. ago, you yeah. came to the shop. Amazing. I came to the shop and said, I want to learn how to work a Mercedes. Well, I said, why don't you buy one? What did you say? I said, others to spend, <laughs> can't afford to buy a Mercedes. But now I got all the Mercedes, diesel and gas. So how many Mercedes do you have right now? I got like five. I have a station wagon, <laughs> three uh, 123s, and you know, and two uh, ML. ML and, yeah. <laughs> He's hooked, just like me. So stay tuned. When we get this product uh, finished, we'll probably do another short video and announce the release of it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. Merry Christmas and keep working <laughs> your old Mercedes. <laughs>